In the previous video, I derived the formula which gives the pressure as a function of depth in a liquid with a constant density. So let's say that over here, we have a liquid which has the same density everywhere in the liquid. And let's say that the pressure at the top surface of the liquid is P sub zero. Then from the surface, let's say that we go a depth H into the liquid. At a depth H beneath the surface of the liquid, the pressure will be the pressure at the top surface plus the density of the liquid multiplied by the free fall acceleration multiplied by the depth beneath the surface. In this video, we're going to apply that formula to an example problem. In this example problem, I have a U-shaped tube, which means that I have a tube with two vertical arms and those two vertical arms are connected to each other by a horizontal segment at the bottom. Both of those vertical arms are open to the atmosphere and the cross-sectional area of the vertical segments on either side is given by A, where A is equal to one square centimeter. The U-shaped tube has been filled with water and the water has been sitting there for a while. So now the water is static, which is to say it's just sitting there without any actual flow. And in this situation where the water is just sitting there without any flow, the height of the water column would be the same on either side of the U-shaped tube. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the right arm of the U-shaped tube and pour in 10 cubic centimeters of oil. The density of that oil is 0 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter. And when we pour in that 10 cubic centimeters of oil, that gives us an oil column, which is going to push down on the water on the right side. And because we then have less water on the right side, that means that some water is now going to end up on the left side. So when we pour that oil into the column on the right, the water level on the right is going to go down and the water level on the left is going to go up. We would like to figure out how far down does the water level on the right side move? So let's say that this figure here represents the initial situation before we pour in the oil. So now let's draw a figure which represents the final situation after the oil has been poured in and after the fluid has time to settle so that we get back to a static situation. So here I've drawn a figure which represents the final situation after the oil has been poured into the right arm of the U-tube. Let's say that the length of that oil column is D sub O, and you can see that the oil column has pushed down on the water column so that some of the water has moved from the right side to the left side, and now the water on the left side is higher. Even though I didn't quite draw it accurately, the assumption here is that the cross-sectional area on the left side and the cross-sectional area on the right side are the same. So the distance by which the water column has gone up on the left side equals the distance by which the water column has gone down on the right side. I'm going to call both of those distances D sub W. So what we're trying to find in this problem is D sub W. That's what the problem asks for. But before we get to that, let's try and figure out the height of the oil column D sub O. We are given the volume of the oil. Let's call that volume of the oil VO. That would be 10 cubic centimeters. That's given. And the volume of that column would be the height of the column times the cross-sectional area. In other words, the volume of the oil column would be that cross-sectional area times the height of the oil column. And from that, we get that the height of the oil column would be the volume of the oil column divided by the area. So we can substitute the volume of the oil is 10 cubic centimeters. The area is one square centimeter. So the height of the oil column would be 10 centimeters. So we're almost ready to actually start solving the problem. But first, I'd like to go through the idea on which the solution is based. Let's look at the two corners of the U-shaped tube 
here at the bottom of the left arm and here at the bottom of the right arm. Where do you think the pressure is greater? Is the pressure greater here in the lower left corner? Is the pressure greater here in the lower right corner? Or are the pressures the same in those two corners? It turns out that these two corners have equal pressures. The reason is that we are assuming that the fluid is static. In other words, we are assuming now that the fluid is not flowing. So suppose that the pressure on the lower left corner was the greater pressure. If this was the greater pressure, then fluid would flow from left to right through that bottom segment. On the other hand, if we had greater pressure over here in the lower right corner, then fluid would flow from right to left through that bottom tube. However, since we are assuming no flow, then the pressure in these two corners must be the same. Okay, so starting with the same pressures in these same two corners, let's go up by one inch on either side. When I start at the two corners and go up through equal distances on either side, I experience equal drops in the pressure. So if I start at equal pressures here and here, and then go up by equal distances on the two sides, I then experience equal drops in pressure, and I am still at equal pressures here and here. If I then go up by another inch on each side, I experience additional equal drops in pressure, and then I am still at equal pressures here and here. And that logic will continue all the way up until I get to the bottom of the oil column over here. So the idea here is that the pressure at the bottom of the oil column on the right side is equal to the pressure at the same height on the left side. So now let's use this idea. Let's call the pressure at the bottom of the oil column P2. And let's call the pressure at the same height on the left side P1. According to the argument we just went through, it must be that pressure 1 equals pressure 2. So what we do now is we come up with expressions for P1 and P2 in terms of DO, DW, and the different fluid densities, and maybe in terms of some other stuff. Once we come up with those expressions for P1 and P2, and then equate them, we will be able to solve for the DW here. So this is where we can use that formula which was derived in the previous video. Now, remember that I said that both of these arms on the left and right are open at the top to the atmosphere. So at the top of the water column on the left side, I have atmospheric pressure. And on the top of the oil column on the right side, I have atmospheric pressure. So now let's use the formula from the previous video to get an expression for P2. I'm going to say that P2 is equal to the pressure at the top of the oil column, which is atmospheric pressure, plus the density of the oil, because I have to go through oil to get from P atmosphere to P2, times the free fall acceleration, and then times the depth here, which in this case is the height of the oil column, d sub o. Now, why don't you pause the video and use a similar method to get an expression for P1 over here, give that a shot, and then rejoin the video. All right, for pressure one, we start with the pressure at the top of the column, which would be, again, atmospheric pressure. Now, as I go from the top of the column on the left down to the level of P1, I'm going through water. So I'm going to put plus density of water, and then again times the free fall acceleration. Now this time, the distance I went through to get from the top of the column down to P1 is two times dW. So I'm going to put in two times dW. 
Now, at this point, I would encourage you to try the rest of the problem on your own, set P1 equal to P2, and see if you can go all the way through to get a numerical value for D sub W. And once you've given that a shot, you can rejoin the video to see what I do. Continuing with the algebra now, I have P2 equals P1. So I'm going to take the expressions from here and here and substitute. So then I have atmospheric pressure plus density oil, G, D oil equals atmospheric pressure plus density water, G, and two, D water. Now I'm going to make some cancellations. P atmosphere cancels against P atmosphere. And then once I've done that, you can see that the terms which remain both have that factor of G. So I can divide through by G as well. So after all of that cancellation, what remains is density oil, D oil equals density water times two D water. Now solving for D water, I get D water equals density oil, D oil divided by two density water. Now let's make substitutions. So density oil, 0 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter. The oil, 10 centimeters. And divide by two. And density water is one gram per cubic centimeter. Cancel grams per cubic centimeters against grams per cubic centimeters. And what you get here is 4.5 centimeters. And now we have done an example problem using this formula, giving pressure as a function of depth.